Pete Calandra here. I recently started scoring a 60 Minutes documentary that's about the life of an American athlete who is a well-known Olympic champion, and this is currently scheduled to be shown on ESPN in February of 2021. What I thought would be interesting would be to keep a weekly blog of my progress working on the music for this film. As it's a work in progress, I can't really show any clips of the film or play any dialogue, but I can give broad strokes about the storyline and how the music fits in. As with most life stories, there are ups and downs, triumphs and hard times, successes, failures, and all shades of emotion and events in between, and the music should reflect all of that. This first cue, which I'll be presenting today, is the opening teaser of the film that sets up the ensuing story. It's analogous to an entr'acte of a musical in that all the themes of the story are presented in a concise manner. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe and to be notified, ring that bell. Please leave any comments or questions below. Thanks so much for watching and let's get right into it. Let's take a listen to this first cue and then come back on the other side and I'll break down the score. So I'm using orchestral libraries. I'm using libraries from a bunch of different vendors. I'm using orchestral tools for my winds, I believe. Yep. I am using the Spitfire Kepler winds, which I had to render. Uh, it uses up a lot of CPU. And I'm using the Eric Whitaker choir for the female vocals. I have this Celtic vo voice from Heaviosity. some Omnisphere from Spectrosonics, Distant Murmurs, and I believe that 
yes, I've done some work with this sound. I've changed the envelope a bit, and I've changed some of the effects on this. Una Corda from Native Instruments. Noir also for Native Instruments. Then I've got some Hauschka from Spitfire Audio. And then some more Omnisphere. I believe the shaker at the end is from Stylus. And then these industrial hits, these are sounds that I created in the stairwell of my old Upper West Side New York City apartment. I went out there with a Zoom recorder and started hitting with a some sort of striking like a wooden spoon or something, various parts of the stairwell, fire extinguisher, door slams. The, the stairwell had like an incredible reverb to it, so I captured a bunch of hits that I use. And then I've got Easy Drummer, postmodern drum kit here doing, I believe, just the hi-hats. And for the big drums, I've got uh, Jason Bonham, which is part of the Hans Zimmer Spitfire drums. And I've got harmonics from a Stratocaster on Omnisphere. I may go in afterwards and play those on a real guitar, but for right now they're staying till everything gets approved. And then the Scarby J bass. And then for strings, they're all Spitfire strings. I really like the Spitfire strings. So I've got the Aperture Spiccatos, the Albion One strings. I've got Aperture Pizzicatos. I've got some string runs from Albion One, ensemble chamber strings from Neo strings. I've got some pulses, solo cello, and upright bass, I believe, actually is from an old library. Yes, it's from the LA scoring strings, which I don't really use that much anymore, but... The upright bass sounded good here. And then I've got some extra instruments in case I need to fill a few things out. Then I've got some wood blocks that I created for a particular section. You heard them in the middle of that piece. There's stuff going on on screen that the wood blocks are hitting. Then going down below that, my effects section, which I've got now, Pro Tools has folders, believe it or not. Welcome to the 21st century Pro Tools. So I'm using Adaptiverb, and I'm using the Fab Filter Pro R for my plate reverb. The percussion plate is UAD Pure Plate, and I'm using the Wet Reverb from New Neighbor. AMS Ping Pong, that's a UAD. Echo Boy with the Binson, and I changed the rhythm a little bit. I've got the Decapitator to do some parallel processing, and then I've got this Harmonizer which is an effects chain. It has the harmonizer, this step gate sequencer called the gatekeeper, and then that goes through a filter freak. And I'll show you where I'm using that. And then everything's routed through my music track here. And then I've got the film in this folder with the voiceover and any uh, sound effects and everything in this folder here. What they told me was that they wanted something that sort of sounded a little haunting, a little mysterious, and at the same time, a little mischievous in the beginning. And then there were certain spots where they wanted things to change with what was going on on the screen. There was the middle section where the opening titles come in. And then there's an uplifting, energetic section when action starts happening. This opening thing that's mysterious is somebody's telling a story about meeting this athlete. And they had no idea who this person was. So... Let's take a look at what I've done here. The other thing that the producers wanted was that they wanted voices in this film. So I've got this Unicorda piano. And that's nice. So I put it through the pro reverb. Just gives it a little room. Additionally, through the wet reverb. Right, adding some mood. And then through the adaptive verb to add an almost choral type effect in the background. So it almost sounds like somebody's going Ooh, in the background. It's really cool. Let's take a look at how that's set, the adaptive verb. So this is just a preset. 
And then I did a few things, tweaking it a little bit with the reverb size. And I did to change the breathiness a little bit. This is a great reverb for doing sound design, but it's incredibly CPU heavy. And if you are writing or working with this on, it adds quite a bit of latency to my system anyway. So when I'm writing, I have to have this, not just muted, I have to have this uh, deactivated. But that's all right. I don't need it to write. I just need it when I'm mixing. Okay. So that comes in at the beginning. And to add a little bit of this mischievousness, I've got this little figure in the oboe. Whoops, let's unsolo that. And then I repeat it. So when I repeat it, it's a little bit different. It's the same rhythm, but it's a different phrase. Right? It's up a step in the scale. I'm, I believe I'm in C minor here. And then right here, it's the first time that you see the main character in the film. So I have some time with pizzicato, aperture pizzicato. Right, and I'm playing that with a very light velocity, so it's a very small section. And we've got the upright bass, the LA scoring strings adding a nice pulse in concert with the aperture pits. And then here, I've got this little figure with the Kepler winds. So we had the beginning, and now this is basically a repeat of the first few measures, first four measures, and I've changed the orchestration here. So that's really important in developing a film. I'm keeping music that's recognizable and draws the listener in. It's part of the same story, and I'm adding elements, building up the orchestration as I go through. So coming up here, you'll hear the bassoon takes over the melody, an octave lower. Actually, two octaves lower. And then when it hits at measure seven, I start to bring in the voices. And then right here, there's a montage of several photos, boom, 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 one after the other, which gives me a chance to use this cool Hauschka rhythm from Spitfire. And it gives me a chance to use my industrial hit, which is from my apartment. So all that together. And then the melody comes in and back in in the oboe. The melody comes back in in the oboe. And instead of being an ascending line, it's a descending line and it's doubled with the flute. Right? Oh, I should clean up that. Yeah, I have to clean up that mod and expression automation. And now right here, there's a change in the story, which I don't have a marker for, but there is a change there. Uh, a new character gets entered into the story. The athlete's coach. Future coach. So we've got this ascending figure, 
and I do a little bit of tiny bit of counterpoint in the voices. Well, not counterpoint, but just a moving inner line. Da 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 da. Mm -hmm. And that goes nicely with the piano. And then the Hauschka rhythm. And octaves there. And right here, I just wanted to create a little floating vibe because we're going to change the energy in a minute. And let's see what I did, how I achieved that. So I've got this repeating six note figure that goes over the bar line. in the unicorda, and then I've got this evolving. Sound here in the Omnisphere, which is really beautiful. And I've got the Hauschka rhythm. So all that stuff sort of blends together to create this nebulous, ethereal, ambient mood. Which I really like. Okay. So now there's a montage of still photos taken throughout the athlete's career, which is really kind of cool. Uh, and they're happening one after the other after the other. And rather than just have something hitting on each one, I just put in some rhythm in the music and it all seems to fit beautifully with the montage. So I've got this figure here with this Omnisphere patch. That's an arpeggiated pattern. And... As you could see, I'm killing the low end on it. It's just too much. And it covered up what I'm doing here with the pizzicato. Too, right? Nothing on the downbeat with the pizzicato, accenting towards the end of the bar. Just kind of cool. And then add that rhythm with the piano. So you see how you can add all these different rhythms together to come up with a really nice composite feel. And then on top of that are these really nice Eric Whitaker Oz. Change the articulation to ooze here. Now, this is very effective here, even though there's not a lot going on, mostly because of the harmonic content being added by the adaptive verb to the piano. So what if I did this? If I took this and I made this pre-fader and then I muted this, we would still hear. Right, so that's just the adaptive verb. Right, it's really an amazing piece of software. So we're going to be transitioning here, bringing the dynamic really down. And the figure that the choir is doing there, or the female singers, is a variation of that opening piano figure. So I'm keeping it together. And then we've got these wood blocks here, which are exactly matching cuts on the screen. There's some sound design that goes on here that I'm not going to play because it might not end up in the film and it's not something I've created. 
And then we're into a new section where things are going on. There's activity, action. There's lots of people telling interesting anecdotes about the, the athlete. And I transitioned into that by do, taking my industrial hit Reversing it, which gives me a nice sweep. And that's going through the Pro R1, the Wet Reverb, and the AMS Ping Pong. So let's move this to the Ping Pong. Oh, there is no Ping Pong. That should be up. Oh, no. Is that later on? Let me just see for a second. Okay, I've automated that in the later section. Great, so at this point, it's only the wet reverb. So let me unpre that and the Pro R1. So that gives us a nice transition into the next section. And we've got a shaker. Actually, this shaker should actually be down here. So what I've got is this shaker pattern going on. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's actually, it's it's accenting the second eighth notes. So one, and two, and three, and. This gives me a nice, it almost sounds like a backbeat at a faster tempo, but we're really only at 70 here. So there's that, and then there's these guitar harmonics that I've got. Right, so that's going through the Pro R1 for some reverb. And then I don't usually do this, but this is just for this one sound. So I thought I would instantiate a time-based delay, uh, a time-based effect right into the insert. And I'm using dual dot echo plexes, and I've changed the rhythm here to do the eighth note and dotted eighth note. So we've got a two against three feel. So without that, it's really nothing, right? It's like that moment in It's Gonna Get Loud where the edge is playing a riff and he turns off all his effects and he's playing two notes and he makes fun of himself. But it really does add quite a bit. And then I've got these Celtic voice phrases, which are really... Very handy. Add a lot of emotion. That half step motion there really, really, really adds a lot of mood to this. And then there's a little answering figure in the piano. And then this low note in the neo strings. I really like the way that evolves. And then aperture pizzicato. Adding just rhythmic vitality there. So if we listen to the harmonics and the aperture pizzicato right there, it's kind of cool. Starting here. All right, we've got this sort of Americana strings. Because it's an American story. And it's uplifting, energetic, successful. Nice J bass from Scarby, my good friend Tom Scarby. Makes great product. voices. I just kept on searching for the phrases that fit really well. And then again here there's a, a little photo montage 
and it's three eighth notes, but I've got a measure of two four here. <laughs> Look at how I constructed that. So I've got this industrial hit. Right, so that's a sweep that I've time shifted. You can see that. And then a hit on the downbeat. That's kind of cool. And then you add on top of that the bottom drums, which really sound great. And then to the girl group drum beat. And then right here, there's a, a drone shot where they wanted me to bring it up and just have more music there, so I came up with these strings. So those are... Let's see if we can look at that in notation, because that's kind of cool what I did there, I think. So these are just suspended chords, right? So this is a G suspended chord. This is a D suspended chord. And then down to this, it's, it's a G scale, but I'm avoiding the F sharp here. Notice I'm skipping over the F sharp just to not have a leading tone. I want to wait till I get to the very end for that leading tone. And then this is the main tie. This is where... There's a second main titles that comes in with the name of the film. And there's some cuts here that the drums are filling up. And the ending. So let's take a listen to that without me talking. All right. That's a look at the first cue. I'm going to play it again from the beginning to the end. Again, thanks so much for watching. I'll come back with another one next week at some point. I've been Pete Calandra, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.